So I'm not sure what it is with America and closing borders. That was my favorite bookstore. My name is Sudhi Sharma. I'm an immigrant. I came to this country with only three dollars in my pocket. I was five years old at the time, so I was doing okay. <laughs> Still only have three dollars in my pocket, that's because I'm a millennial. Um, I was born in Nairobi, Kenya, and I'm of Indian origin, but I'm pretty lucky because I can walk into a Mexican restaurant or a Mediterranean restaurant or a Pakistani restaurant, and they think I'm one of them. Um, I, uh, my experience as an Asian immigrant is different than what most people think. Um, it makes me question how we put people's experiences in boxes. Like, if you're an Asian immigrant, it means you did well, you live in the suburbs, and you have an established career. Um, this is otherwise known as a model minority myth, and it's obviously not true. I grew up in poverty, um, my immigration path was not uh, well hewn out, and right now I know a lot of Asians who had that experience, but growing up I didn't. Um, it's a really hard time to be an immigrant in the country right now. We carry a lot of weight with what's going on with kids at the border, to words being used to describe and dehumanize our community. Immigrants today, um, like Lupe's beautiful story, are almost s synonymous with narratives of grit, displacement, being ripped from families, having to be reunited. These stories are so important, and I'm here to stand in solidarity with that. But today, I want to talk about our joy as immigrants and how it's worthy. Our joy is worth celebrating, our joy is worth sharing, and it's worth talking about. We're more than stories served up for white people to show grit and horror. We're people, and as artists, our stories don't always have to revolve around pain and struggles. Sometimes it does, sometimes it has to. But I want to talk about abundance and joy. So I'm going to talk about papers, or having papers. Um, not papers that we usually talk about, I'm going to talk about my journey with books as an immigrant. Um, the first book I read in America was Where the Wild Things Are. I was five years old. I was horrified that the kid's mother would send him home without dinner. Uh, the teacher in the public school read to me, I couldn't help but relate to this book of traveling to this world where people don't look like you, and then somehow taking ownership of that world. That was powerful to me. Um, my family was pretty educated. I, have, uh, I was really privileged in that both my parents spoke English when they moved to America. Um, both had been to college. My grandpa on my mom's side, uh, he was a professor, so I, was, uh, I'm, I'm, I have to check my privilege in that I was surrounded around books. I was surrounded around the expectation that I was supposed to read. Um, I enjoyed it as a kid, but it didn't really stick. After, uh, as I grew up, uh, when we immigrated here, I was occupied with other things like watching Sesame Street, learning how to cope with the weather, or trying to convince my mom to take me to the culinary embodiment of the American dream, McDonald's. <laughs> it stayed this way for a while until I grew up and needed somebody, somewhere to escape from the chaos around me. My parents always fought as a kid um, about their marriage, about my dad's infidelity, about my mom's mental health, about money, about how we had none of it, um, about immigration, and as, uh, I, as, soon as I was growing up, I needed this place to escape. So whenever they fought, I'd grab a library book and escape to this world of white suburban kids li living in a peaceful life where, you know, the boys played pranks on the girls and vice versa. Um, one morning um, in our apartment, we woke up and it was hot and the ceiling fans wouldn't turn, and none of the lights would turn on. And we found out that we couldn't pay our bills, so our electricity had been cut. So my mom took us to the one place she knew we'd find free air conditioning, which was the library. Um, we spent the entire day there, my sister and I are consuming probably every single Mary-Kate and Ashley mystery. Um, this was my first introduction to the library being a place of refuge for me. Um, to this day, I feel the safest in libraries, surrounded by books I know, words I've memorized, and authors who promise I'm not alone. One early summer morning, my sister and I, 11 and 10, answered a knock at the door of our apartment. Um, it was a police officer, and he told us that we were about to be evicted. We called our mom, who was in the shower, and she told us to get our most valuable belongings, put them in a bag, and evacuate the house. We watched as they carried the belongings of our house into the public of the lawn. Um, my dad drove home uh, from work when he heard what happened, and they paced around, made some calls, got a U-Haul, and with the help of some friends, 
we moved to a tiny basement apartment in the streets of Devon, which is otherwise known as Little India. I hated this house. I hated what the summer was becoming. I hated everything. I wanted to go back to our condo, to the illusion that we were middle class, that we didn't have immigration hanging by a pendulum. Um, the things would work out. But then my sister and I started exploring the neighborhood where everyone talked the language that my parents did at home and where the street smelled like masala and sugarcane with ginger. My mom found the public library to send emails from and then my sister and I started checking out books. Something happened like we stumbled on hunger that needed to be filled constantly. We asked our dad to drive us to the suburban library, which was usually better stocked, and we came home with just bagfuls of books, historical fiction about the Great Depression, um, cookbooks with ingredients we couldn't afford, but we really liked looking at the pictures, um, American Girl magazines. You know, it was in the library that I felt I didn't come up short. It didn't matter that I wasn't American. It didn't matter that I wasn't rich. It didn't matter that I wasn't dressed stylishly enough. The books were for me, too. Um, I discovered Narnia and Lord of the Rings, and it was like a world to escape to. For an immigrant like me, growing up in a low-income area of Devon, where we could barely make our $600 a month rent, where we ate most of our food from food pantries, where we heaped laundry bags onto carts to wheel to the laundromat in Chicago winters, where we um, couldn't ever see family members and they were dying because we just simply couldn't leave the country. Um, I found a world like where a wardrobe could take me somewhere else. That saved me and let me know that there's a place in this world for dreams. But something was different from all of these books I read. I related and I could identify with the characters who wanted to explore something, but I never saw myself in these books. I never saw a brown girl who ate with her hands or ran in the alley during summertime or heard uh, people yelling at different languages to each other from their windows. I never saw a character who understood displacement. Um, so after years of living in the basement house, someone we knew got married, moved to the city, and let us have, live in their house for free, and then they later gave us a loan so that we could buy the house. Um, it was, we're still paying it back, but it was such a milestone for my parents to own land in America. Um, it was the first time we had peace and stability about where we lived. This is also when I found the book The House on Mango Street by Sandro Cisneros. Um, a lot of my experience as an immigrant, particularly the hardship and fears, um, I tend to share and identify more with members of the Hispanic Latinx community um, because I didn't have a nice house in Oak Brook. I didn't have a green card. I didn't have a parent-funded path to medical school like most Asian immigrants that I knew. Um, I related to, you know, buying ice cream on hot summer walks to the grocery store or getting fights at the laundromat with my sister or shivering on train platforms and bus stops while snow fell around us. Um, it was everything in this book that I found, I found in my heart. Like here was someone who was from immigrants, who grew up in a poor part of Chicago, who loved her culture, but also wanted to establish herself um, as an independent woman. Um, I saw myself in the book and it satisfied a thirst that I knew I had, but couldn't really put in words.